thank you uh, and thank you excellencies heroes ladies and and gentlemen we have heard so many moving strong important stories about battles about combat for freedom i must say babe, i must say we all get very very humble on what we hear but at the same time these are the same stories that I used to hear through Liberal International. And I can say that I'm so proud of being a member of that political family, being the co-host of this organization. And, and we can see how important it is for Liberal International to join forces with civil society. These words that you have been saying here, they can end up in a resolution in one parliament somewhere, an action, a letter to uh, parliamentarians, to politicians. It leads to action. That's the, the idea with the human rights work and the network of parliamentarians joining that uh, liberal international. That's the idea with, with the net we have established and why we are working. And I hope that it could inspire also other international, political internationals, to set up the, the same. However, I must say that I adhere very much to what Ambassador Moses said about the future of the world order we cherish. Uh, we have, I think we are fearing, and I'm personally a bit fearing, that now the fighters for civil rights and human rights will turn inwards instead of being global. And I think the key word here now is what you said recently, solidarity. We must see that we are not losing sight of the needed solidarity and how the evil can spread from one continent to another. And we see how the autocrats are copying their patterns from another to, to other. So I hope that we can, we can uh, both continue the, uh, continue the fight globally and we must be more uh, active uh, at home. We had also seen previously that the appetite to listen to the international community has dwindled. That is also, when you are critical of the United Nations, I can say that during my work, I can see how there are, there are countries who, who listen less and less to the international community. And it, despite that there exists, uh, like urging people, a country to have a retrial of, of, of a political prisoner, then the trial is only a show trial. Uh, we can see all these cases, and not at all listening to, to, to the international community or to redrawing from some of the European mechanisms that we, we have. Also, that is happening. So, and the th and an additional thing I would like to, to say, and I mu must say that you, uh, Ms. Nemtsova, you also highlighted that, how there is the shrinking and shrinking space for civil society in many, many countries, and how we must really be smarter in order to try to work with, with those challenges that we have. And we can also see a kind of dehumanizing of people. I think anybody who is uh, moving on the European uh, soil can see how dangerous and slippery slope the words uttered by populists now is. When the human rights of migrants is not take, taken for, for sure, when exactly the hum dehumanizing. And for instance, we have a European leader who is putting, saying that George Soros and the international community is the big danger for his country, uh, making the migration waves. How can such things happen uh, 69 years, as Moses was saying, about after the adoption of the important documents? We are living very, very uh, dangerous time. We also note the hate rhetoric, the hate messages, the way people are talking to each other. And here, I must say that often, quite often, minorities are now the target. Uh, they, 
uh, they are the they are the others. They are the scapegoats besides migrants or also anybody. Terror terrorism is used largely. It, at this occasion, there I would like to mention uh, the Rohingya group in in Myanmar, which I hope also will be highlighted during the next Human Rights Council because there is the very, very good testimony from 200 persons who have been beaten, who have been uh, persecuted, that their case will be, be uh, also held up. We cannot uh, uh, let happen a situation when, okay, you are building democracy, and uh, when you are doing that, you must you are allowed to oppress minorities because the, that is not that is not possible. Or we can see also how those Crimean Tatars who defend the territorial integrity of Ukraine are those who are, for instance, the target of some authorities. Most very very peaceful people who have a bad history in their day now. What deportations means. So solidarity, not not turning inwards, having a broad definition also of what human rights are. And I would like to, I, I think we will need also to stress even more also the rule of law. I'm very happy that I got in my hands from the very famous Raoul Wallenberg Institute in, in not in Malmö, uh, but, but in southern Sweden anyway, famously, a rule of law guide for politicians. I think we must also uh, remember rule of law at the same time of, of these two other words, because without rule of law, you will have no human rights. And rule of law means for people, and we must be better at explaining that it means uh, that you are protecting for arbitrary decision by autocrats, by ruling elites, by the thugs and thieves, but also protecting politicians when they will lose power. I think sometimes that could also be useful to, to mention, that it can be also protection from them. Rule of law, this booklet, this easy booklet, which is written exactly so that it could be read by politicians. Let's not forget that. And dear friends, as we say, I hope that we can be smarter, that we can network, that we can inspire other organizations to jo join uh, our work, and for instance, to follow what the African Liberal Network has been doing when it has, as a first regional political network, adopted a uh, human rights declaration. I think we must also inspire other regional clubs of politicians to do that. And I hope also the message next week could be to, to world leaders. Uh, we must prevent further conflicts from erupting. And the only way to do that is prevention. But prevention cannot be effective if atrocity crimes continue, if human rights violations persist. It is time really to stop the conflict cycles, and that can be done only to respect for human rights. Human rights first in an organization that is really serious about prevention. And first step is really to be stronger about the crimes that has been noted today. And I think we should seek a, an ally uh, in the new Secretary General. Uh, he is so serious about prevention.